Welcome to our first episode in our final series on chapter two, the biochemistry chapter. And in this series of videos, we're gonna learn about chemical reactions and how enzymes control those chemical reactions. And if you can recall from our series on proteins and nucleic acids, you'll remember that enzymes are by far the most important job that proteins do. And without these enzymes, none of the chemistry that makes your, your body tick or makes a cell work uh, it would just not happen without it. And we're going to learn why that's true today. All right, well, first off, what is a chemical reaction? <clears throat> chemical reaction is just a, a, a series of events where one set of chemicals gets turned into a different set of chemicals. And this is done by rearranging the chemical bonds. Okay, so as you see over here in color, it's a process that changes one set of chemicals into another. And, and these different sets of chemicals are called the reactants, and the products. So a great way to remember this is anything left of the arrow is a reactant. So in this example we have chemical A plus chemical B is going to turn into chemical C and D. And the products are always being pointed at by the arrow. So the arrow always points to the products. Now the arrow itself means yields. So when we combine A plus B it will yield the chemicals C plus D. So this should just be a, re a reminder or a review from chemistry classes you probably had in middle school. All right, so nothing new here. All right, now how do enzymes do what they do? Well, first of all, we need to talk about what the activation energy is. And we have a little symbol for activation. It's E sub A, energy of activation. Okay, this is the energy that's required to get a, a chemical reaction started. Uh, think about this, right? Uh, you know, winter, unfortunately, is coming up. Or maybe you've been at the top of the hill with a skateboard in the summertime. And before you can let gravity do what it needs to do, you've got to give that skateboard or sled just a little push. And it's that little push that's the activation energy. It's just what's needed to get it going. Right? Now, previously on some other screencasts, we had talked about anabolic, right? And anabolic... If you can remember, this is basically a chemical reaction in which energy is required to get started. And our little remember, or our little device to remember, was that Anna builds. Okay, so when Anna is building something, that's going to require energy. Okay, and let's put a big E there. So the bolic refers to to, to energy or, or chemical reaction, and then ana means to absorb or to take in. So anabolic reactions absorb energy. Okay, now we have a new word, okay, gonic. Gonic refers to energy. And then ender refers to inside, and we'll just say in. So anabolic, intergonic, these two are synonyms. They mean that energy is being brought in and that energy is going to be used to build something. And so endergonic means energy is being absorbed, energy is being brought in. Okay, this energy is used to build. Remember, Anna builds. It's going to be used to build new chemical bonds. And these chemical bonds are almost always covalent. And if you can remember, covalent means you're sharing electrons. So you're sharing electrons, and valent is on the outside of the, of the atom. Okay. Previously, we've talked a lot about dehydration synthesis. Dehydration synthesis, you are taking away water. So I'm just going to write here, water out. And then synthesis, that just means to make. Okay, that should be two words. Just fix that over here. To make. There we go. Okay. What, what happens here is you're taking water out as you're hooking two monomers together and that's going to provide a linkage, okay? And this is an anabolic reaction. So as you remember, look what we got here. We got anabuilds. We've got the word built, okay? We've got, we're making something. We're creating new bonds, uh, energy in. Okay, so really nothing new in here, but remember, we got this energy that gets it started. All right, uh, we got a graphic here that's going to explain that. Let's wipe that out of the way. All right, endergonic reactions are really best described by this graph. Over here on this side, is we have energy. So low energy, high energy. And down on the uh, x-axis, we simply have time. 
So this would be the beginning of the reaction, and this would be the end. Right? So this plateau right here, that represents the reactants. And I'm just going to yeah, REAX for that. And then up here where it says products, so that's simply the products. Right? So what happened, in order to get these reactants to turn into these products, we have to add energy. And so what this upward slope means is that you're adding energy. And that's a big E for energy. So basically what we're saying here is because we've absorbed energy, the products contain more energy than the reactants. Okay? So let's do this. We'll say less energy. And then up here we'll put down more energy. And then basically what we're saying right here, the difference from here to there, that's the amount of energy that was required. So this is an anabolic or an endergonic reaction. We've had to add energy to get it going. Now, will this type of chemical reaction occur naturally? Typically not. It's going to need a lot of help. And that's where an enzyme is going to come in. But that will be on a different podcast. So we're, or I'm sorry, screencast. So we're going to get to that one here in just a little bit. All right, let's wipe away all those graphics. There we go. And move on to the next one. All right. Catabolic reaction. We've talked about these before on a previous series. In fact, I believe we talked about it in Chapter 2A, the first series of screencasts that occurred in this chapter. And if you can remember our little st uh, strategy to remember this is the cat breaks. And whenever we break something, we are going to release energy. Now, when we release energy we create what is known as a exergonic reaction. Now remember the gonic, that just refers to energy. And the exer, that means out. So this would be energy out. We're releasing energy. It's leaving the chemical reaction. Okay, now why does it happen? Remember up here, the cat breaks? Because the bonds, chemical bonds, where energy is stored, those are broken. So whenever we break something, the energy is going to fly out. Okay. Now we talked previously about hydrolysis. And the word hydrolysis, the hydro refers to water. And then lysis, if you can remember, that means to break. So we're using water to break something. So we have a dimer. We have two monomers hooked together. That bond in there, it will be broken, or broken by taking a water molecule, breaking it in half, and putting the parts into that, and that will separate it. So like an OH goes on one monomer, and an H goes on the, on another. Okay, we've gone over this. You know, we've had three uh, screencast series in a row. So you guys should be really, really up to date on what uh, hydrolysis is. Okay, I want you to focus down here on this graph. Looks very similar to one we watched previously. Once again, on this axis, we have energy. Let's get a different color in here. Uh, let's go with blue. All right, so here we got low energy, and here we got high energy. So I'm just going to put a HI up there, and down here I'm going to put a low. And then on the bottom, remember, course of reaction is simply a fancy word for time. Whoops. So this would be the beginning of the reaction. This would be the end. This plateau represents reactants, and this plateau down here represents the products. In the distance between here to there is the energy that was released. So we would have energy going out. Whoops, there we go. So in this case, the reactants have more energy and then the products have less energy. So let's put a big E next to that so you remember what the more means. And then here we have less energy. So it's just the opposite of what we saw with an anabolic or an endergonic reaction is in this case, we have energy being released. Now, these basically have a tendency to be spontaneous. They will happen naturally. Uh, it really doesn't take very much to get them going because once they go, the energy just keeps feeding itself and off it goes. All right. Okay, next slide. Whoops, actually, we need to stop there. All right, so this will end this screencast. Uh, the next episode will be on what you see here, chemical reactions and enzymes. So until next time, make sure you're keeping up on your menu and getting prepared for the test that will be at the end of this week. Okay, catch you at the next episode.